Hello everybody, welcome back to another vlog. Today we're going to talk about cars and about face masks. Because cars are important and so are the face masks. But first I'm going to talk about my car specifically. Last week I talked about the fact that a while ago, about a week and a half before then, um, the steering wheel, no, about a week before then. Okay, it's not important. But anyway, I had tried to park my car, steered into a parking lot, and the steering wheel got stuck. So I can like uh, turn the way I needed to go. I had to turn the car off and on again in order for the steering wheel to loosen up so I could continue my journey into an actual parking spot and not just blocking the uh, entrance to said parking lot. So I went to the garage with the car yesterday and they didn't have any time for it yesterday so they fixed it up today, at least they looked at it today. And when I went to go get it they told me that it was probably caused by the fact that the battery had died a while ago which it had because shortly after I bought the car about a year ago now um, I hadn't used it much and if you don't use a car very often then the battery will eventually just uh, empty out on its own and then it can't start blah 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 so I had had a new battery put in at that time because the guy who came to fix it was like okay we could try to recharge it but it won't be stable because there's like a certain chemical balance inside the battery and if you let it die then it'll start to unmix and it's better to just put a new battery in and then um, that's what we did. Which was also a little stronger than the battery that I used to have, coincidentally, so that was also a good deal. So yeah, that had happened. The uh, computer that's in the car had at some point been without power because the battery had been replaced. And that apparently, according to the guy at the garage, was uh, enough for the system that also controls the steering to be a little off. And so uh, he went and reset the computer in the car, because most cars these days have computers, even though I have no idea where the computer is, but apparently it has one. So that's been reset and now it should be fine and of course need to monitor to see what it does, but it should be okay. And also he gave me the tip that the car actually has a city mode, which I never even looked at. Apparently there's a button on the dash somewhere that says city, and if you press that then it actually steers a little lighter. And I not going to take that as an insult as in I think you think the car is steering too heavily uh, little woman because sometimes you have people will get a little upset about that type of thing although of course part of me was like well I have no trouble with a heavy steering wheel but I thought well maybe I'll just use the city mode to make sure that it's lighter and it's not likely to get stuck so much at least I hope that that's going to be the effect so I found the city button and pressed it on the way home and now the car is in city mode and I didn't notice anything about it but of course I'm gonna monitor what it does with each turn that I take with the car from now on to see if it even uh, slightly halters on the way back uh, toward the middle. Let's see what it does. So that's the car situation. Now the next thing of course is face masks and the thing is here in the Netherlands and I believe in other places in the world the whole corona situation um, people are starting to um, be a little bit released from their lockdowns and in the Netherlands as well, we're going to soon be allowed to take uh, public transport more often if we need to. If I need to go to the office, I can go by train again. Not that I couldn't go before, but I'd need a good reason to get on the train. They wouldn't have asked, I think, because there was nobody checking tickets, etc. So um, basically, we're just going to see more people on the train. And since the train and the bus and other forms of public transport like trams and stuff like that, metros, are difficult to um, space people out in, uh, we do have to try and keep our distance. But also you cannot board a train or a bus uh, once we are allowed to do that, I think May 11th or June 1st, one of those two dates, uh, without wearing a face mask. And of course now we get the, the rub here. Uh, we want to reserve the face mask, the one produced professionally for the people who need them in like care professions and stuff like that and that means we need to figure out if we can get our own. I'm pretty sure you can order some stuff online but those are of course now being offered at ridiculous prices because people want to sell stuff for a good deal because they're like trying to get some uh, interest out of the situation so to speak. So I've been looking up some videos on how to make face masks and a lot of them require sewing but there's also a lot of them that don't. So if you're not good at sewing then uh, you need to try out some of the stuff that I've been doing. I'll show you a couple that I've made. I'll show you the first attempt that I made which is a no sew mask. I think it's this one. Right, just this right here. Can you see that? It's a sleeve basically and I've put some little loops on the end. 
it's just the sleeve, so there's nothing in here. Although I am gonna like cut open the top here to try and put a filter in it because you can put like a, any type of thing, like a Swiffer thing, whatever pad or coffee filters might be a possibility as well, or just uh, tissues. But this one is simply a, a sleeve of a old thing that I wasn't gonna wear anymore, and I cut a few slits in here. Hope you can see that. Yeah, cut a couple slits there. Put the loop through, and if you have rubber bands, it's probably easier. This is just a piece of fabric and did that for both sides. And then you can kind of wear it like this. Sort of. It's not quite ideal and also looks a little funny. So, but this is a possibility. And like I said, you can cut it open and then put some filters in it. I'll probably do that later to make it more than just a piece of fabric. So I made a couple of them, maybe three actually, before I started looking for another thing because that, oh, my four actually. Wow. I've been productive. So these are going to get filters put in them, so they're even more useful because it's good to have a couple that you can like switch out. I would probably take two of them with me on a day that I would go to work, like one for the way over and one for the way back, so I don't have to reapply the mask on the way home and catch whatever the mask has been trying to stop uh, by putting it back on. Then I made a similar one, but out of a bandana. Look, this one's really cute. Can you see this? These were bandanas that uh, were sold around last year's Christmas and they were to help uh, sponsor a veterinarian clinic or a pound, I think in Curacao, I'm not really sure where exactly, but if you bought some of these things, they also had like little shirts for a dog to wear around Christmas, so I bought a bunch of those and a couple of bandanas. This one is green and the other one is red with the same print pretty much. And it's 100% cotton, so I thought that would be very cute, the Christmas edition. Here I did the exact same thing, only with this one I actually did put a filter in it. Can you see that there? Yeah, there's the filters right there because the top is open already. And this one has matching straps for the ears, so... It's a little tighter, if you can see. There we go. It works. There you go. So then you can take the filter out and just uh, wash it. If you can hear Miguel. And then go ahead and uh, put another one in afterwards once it's dried and you could just reuse this one. But the most interesting one that I've been making was actually a design by a doctor. I've forgotten his name, Yang or Yun, I don't know. I'll probably try linking the video in the description so you can look at it yourself. It's another no so um, mask that you can make with some very um, simple things. Excuse me. Like you will need one sheet of kitchen roll, like so. You will need a strip of paper, printer paper will do, it's mostly to keep the shape. Shouldn't be too thick because you need to be able to wear it. Uh, you will also need just a regular tissue, like so, just any of these. Uh, furthermore, you're going to need either some rubber bands, the smaller ones, like the ones that you can just comfortably loop around your ear. And if you don't have those, then I've also used the regular stuff that I use on here as well. This type of rope thing. Actually, I have the entire thing here when I just showed the scheme. There we go. This is basically cotton fabric that was made out of leftover fabric. Uh, it's like that hook spaghetti stuff, so you might have some of that lying around the house as well. You can use that as well. And last, but certainly not least, and probably most importantly, you're gonna need a stapler. Can you see that? It's black. There you go, stapler. Just a random stapler, it doesn't really matter. It needs to be able to pierce through a good layer of uh, tissue folded, so you need to have it uh, be reasonable sized. Regular office size will do. And not everybody has a stapler anymore these days, at least I had to go out and get one, so I uh, went and did that, and then with that you can make something that looks like this. See, everything's been folded up. I'll try making one on the stream so you can see, stream, on a video so you can see what it looks like. There. And this actually looks more like an actual mask. And of course, since it's uh, disposable, you can just toss it in the trash once you're done. Easy. Looks a little bit more like the type of thing you would buy because of the band here, I think. People will be less uh, annoyed with you, I guess. 
At least if I were to wear that gray thing, you might go, oh wow, where did they get that thing? But this actually looks like a legitimate uh, article. I said I was going to link the video and the description, and I will do that, but I will also try to demonstrate how it's done on here, because that's just fun to do. We'll do a little more crafting. So you might have different sizes of uh, sheets here. If you have one that's like half of this, you might want to get two of them. Don't separate them because you want to fold them and use them in other ways. If you have square ones like these, then you can just use one square. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold it halfway. Let's see if I can do that and show it on the camera at the same time. I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to need some space to work. I'll just work on my lap. There we go. So now it's folded. There you go. Now we're going to want to fold it in thirds like this and then the other one goes up. There, that one goes on top of that, so it becomes a strip. Now it's important to note how wide this strip is. Not this, but more like uh, this length right here, because that is the length and width of the paper strip that you're going to cut. Which you're going to grab your paper sheet right here, so it's about this wide. I'm going to cut a strip that's certainly going to fit in there. Make sure that it's uh, not too wide, better air on the side of uh, it being too thin rather than too thick. So I think this is a good size. Quickly cut myself the strip. There. Now the strip of paper is just for solidity to keep it from folding inward. So you have this little strip right here. We've got this folded piece. We're going to unfold... Oh, there goes my strip. So you're going to unfold it again like this. And you need to keep an eye on where you're going to put the paper. So this would be the middle of the mask right here, this middle thing. So this piece of paper needs to be on this side, but then on the inside. So we're going to put it right here. There. See that? It's on the second one right now. And the tissue comes next. So we're going to take our tissue right here. You're going to want to take a look how wide or long your uh, folded piece of cloth is, or tissue I should say. I'm going to put it on top, try to show you. There, since I can unfold this one over here, just put it basically down there over top of the paper. And then I'm going to fold it shut, right on top of that. And fold it back in threes again. There, so now it's back in this shape right here. I'm going to fold it once and make sure to flatten it because it needs to stay in this position for a while. Now we're going to open it up again. You'll never guess. There, because we're going to fold this in and then turn it over a little bit so you get like an edge here. See that? So folding this over and then taking it and folding it back halfway. I'll just do it so that it's easier to see what I mean. Now this isn't the best one I've made so far because I'm trying to do it real quick. There, see, now it's like halfway on there because I folded it back. There, you can kind of see it over there. Lighting is a bit dark because it's actually evening now. Now you're going to do the same thing on the other flap, but that one of course folds up instead of down. I need it to cooperate. So then you end up with something that looks like this. So you have like the folded layers there and the two strips that have been folded back. So this is going to be the side that's going to be facing you because you're going to open that up to put it over your chin and your nose ridge. So we're going to keep it like this. Now we need the uh, bits, uh, either the, uh, what do you call them, the rubber bands or the pieces of cloth. I'm going to cut some for myself real quick, because I didn't do that. Obviously, I don't prepare these things beforehand. Okay, so now I have two strips here of cloth. They are actually somewhat even, but it's okay. I'm just going to put a knot in them anyway. I'm first going to put a little knot here to make the loop, and then we'll go ahead and put that on our construction. Okay, so I've got these little loops here might have to make them a little bigger we're gonna see how that works out so we're going back to our folded stuff here now since this side is gonna be facing you 
uh, we're going to fold the edge forward so that it comes this way. We're just going to take a little edge here, fold it forward. We're going to take the loop and put it in there. Three, two, one, go. Ah. There. So it's like this with the loop coming through. As you can see, there it is. And now the staplers come in because we're going to staple this. And you want to staple it in such a manner that the, the two little prongs are on this side so they don't actually end up uh, poking your face. So you need to make sure to put that in the right position. There, number one. There, so now these two little bits are on the outside and the smooth ones are here on the inside. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Voila. And that's the mask done. And now we want to put it on. You want to grab these edges here, pull them outward, as you can see. So you can't actually put that over your nose and your mouth. And just and you got yourself a very fashionable looking uh, paper mask, which I'm hoping you're going to be able to use. And of course, if you want to make it even more filtery, you can use uh, filters, like I said, like this or other types of filters uh, instead of this, obviously, but it just depends on what you like. I don't know if this is comfortable to breathe through or if it breathes through at all. Not very good. Maybe you want to take one layer or something instead of two. Oh, we'll have to take a look. Maybe you've got other things that you could put in there for a filter or something. Of course, face masks do not 100% guarantee that you're not going to catch anything, so you always got to remain careful. Keep your distance, don't do anything crazy, don't go hang out in large groups. Because it is not a guarantee that you won't catch anything, rather it's to prevent other people from potentially catching something from you. So I would advise making a whole bunch of these in case you need to go somewhere and then you just have a stack lying around for when you need them and then it'll be very good. And of course with these things you can uh, always make sure to cut the loops out again once you're done using the middle parts so you can reuse these or the rubber bands that you're going to use, whichever comes first. And of course you can always uh, make things like this as well and just cut this open like I said and put a filter in there, whichever you like. Maybe on a cold day you'll want to wear something that's not quite so cold, although having these on, of course you're breathing in it, so it's actually quite warm on its own. But okay, so that's it, that's what I'm doing, and I hope you're uh, um, still safe, etc. And also have your uh, masks available and ready to go. Make sure to look up a bunch of videos, because there's a lot of no-sew tutorials for making your own masks. There's tons of them out there, you can make masks out of anything, t-shirts, uh, bandanas, pillowcases, seen all kinds of things, even Row leggings, I've seen a few people trying to make them out of those, which is just as well, because then they can finally get rid of all their stock. Anyway, so that's it for today, hope you enjoyed it, hope I'll see you again next week. Make sure to stay safe and stay healthy, and bye-bye for now.